طيب Yes, I I can control the slides now. Shall we start? It's nine thirty in Prague, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so your video is not showing here on the screen in the room. I'm gonna grab it or see if I get someone. Oh, no problem. No problem. Um, just, yeah, just let the slides show the big screen. Yeah, so we can see the slides here. Yeah. Okay. So let's start. Welcome to uh, CoinRG. So this is Jeffrey, one of the co-chairs, and the other two co-chairs, Eve and uh, Marie Jose, are also online. So they are in a very difficult time zone. And we also today have uh, Ike helping us in the meeting room as a delegate uh, co-chair. Thank you, Ike. Somebody should say, please start introduce the uh, chair slide. Yeah, I don't have the control. Could you move to the next slide? Okay. So, uh, of course, uh, hi, this is Marie Jose. Uh, of course, uh, computing in the network uh, follows uh, the note well of the ITF. So, uh, especially, um, I think what has always been a problem is uh, the the patents. So if anybody in the presentations today uh, has an issue with patents or has knows of patents that have been declared against the material, please uh, come forward. Next slide. Again, so this is the um, policies. Uh, everybody should know that the session is being recorded. So again, uh, this is important for uh, people, both presenters and people who will ask questions. Next slide. So obviously, uh, this is the, the bunch of uh, administrivia. Uh, we have the new tool, which seems to work uh, pretty well. Um, and it has automatic blue sheets, which is fantastic. It has uh, everything's integrated now, so that's fine. Uh, again, Ike uh, is in the room, so he's going to be able to help us moderate uh, and um, please everybody's online uh, please keep your uh, your audio muted and video off and uh, it says headphones strongly recommended but funnily I'm not having any right now uh, there's the chat which is also integrated it's on the I, for me it's on the left hand side of the screen there's going to be a uh, um, Eve is going to lead the note taking, but everybody has access so people can add. And of course, there's going to be um, the uh, presentation will be available uh, after the recording and um, will also, I think, be uploaded to the IETF YouTube channel. And uh, our mailing list is, is IETF, coin at IRTF.org. And of course, the meeting material are, are on data tracker and everybody has access. Next slide. So it's just a, uh, a, a, a re, uh, I would say, a reminder. Um, IRTF is not a uh, standardization body. It is a research um, organization. So what we present is research. There is no uh, goal of standardizing anything and uh, so I think it's an important thing because I keep seeing that in a lot of emails you know like people send I would like to bring this or that to standardizations so I'm going to present it to the IRTF well it's the wrong place you should actually present that to the IETF not us next uh, so you want to take over, Eve, to talk of the agenda, or should I? Continue? Sure, sure. I'll, I'm happy to do that. Um, we're going to begin uh, the session with research topics, followed by uh, research group draft updates, and then individual drafts, and then some additional uh, new uh, topics that we're introducing. In terms of the research topics, very excited to have um, Ike here. Um, 
at this session because he was supposed to present um, the end-to-end -end discussion topic at the last ITF or maybe a couple ITFs ago, the Japan IETF, uh, and unfortunately fell sick. So we're excited that you're, you're here um, and we'll do that at this session. Um, the second research topic is one that was um, presented at SIGCOM this year. Um, again, so it's terrific that we've got Hey Yu Song uh, with us um, to uh, present that. Um, the third research topic is um, something that um, Ming Wan Zhang is going to present. She is a final year student at Technical University of Denmark. Um, and she uh, did this work in collaboration with folks at um, University of Oxford. And uh, it was, it first appeared in the IEEE transactions. Oh, I think it's IEEE IoT journal is what it's called. Uh, and there's also some exciting uh, follow on work to it that includes federated learning. In fact, I wanted to also point out that Ike has been a, a constant uh, participant in the COIN research group. And um, he's a PhD student uh, at Aachen and is um, kind of a very senior PhD student. So we have multiple students here who are kind of in the final stages of their, of their studies. So make note um, for those of you who might be hiring. Um, we have a couple of drafts that have been updated that have been adopted by the group. The use case analysis draft is one that it has a companion draft. Um, and it, this one analyzes the use cases that are uh, have been described in the companion draft, um, and which you'll, uh, which I think has just gone to last uh, last call. The directions for computing in the network, um, is also um, an important research draft that has an update and uh, uh, a long awaited update. And it was just updated right after the last IETF. Um, and so uh, uh, Dirk uh, Kutcher will be presenting that. Um, there are, there is a new, hey, you will um, also be presenting a new individual draft on the requirements of a unified transfer protocol. And of course, that's related to what ICA um, is also pre um, presenting earlier. The, uh, the other draft is um, an update um, to some material that was presented in a previous ITF on uh, an evolution of cooperating layered architecture for SDN for compute and data awareness. The final topic on the agenda is in very interesting work. I think um, it, is, it goes by the acronym of AI for me. It is a collaboration among uh, several uh, entities, notably the BBC, R&D arm of the BBC. I believe that uh, Dan King will be presenting as opposed to Rajiv. Um, uh, but no matter, I'm sure it'll be really interesting. And it, this is just to give you a little flavor of this work. It is in collaboration with two universities, University of Surrey and Lancaster University. And I hope I got all of those names correct. But, um, and this is really more of um, a teaser for, to queue up a potentially longer discussion about it when we have more time in the agenda. I did want to thank many others who offered to present in this session, but for whom we didn't have enough time. Uh, so let's continue those conversations to get some of your work aired, um, either when it's ready enough um, or as the uh, clarity of how it's related to the group becomes more apparent. Um, so stay tuned for other topics uh, in our next session. Back to you, either Jeffrey or Marisha Zay. Next slide. OK, let me introduce this uh, document statement. So yesterday, uh, yesterday I sent an email to the list. Uh, so we basically, we set a, a finish date for the last call. That's uh, two weeks after this uh, ITF week. So please uh, review, uh, read this document, review it, and uh, send the feedback to the list or the authors. And uh, we have uh, 
other two documents will update. We will we will we will update uh, uh, today, and there are other individual uh, jobs. Okay. Yeah, that's more uh, individual jobs. Okay, I think let's start the presentations. Ike, you are the first one, right? Okay, then hello again. Um, so I'm Ike, and this is actually not stuff that I've been doing alone. So basically, this goes back all the way to uh, ITF last year in London, uh, where I had another presentation, and afterwards we had quite a few discussions on the network computing, the end-to-end -end principle, transport, and so on. And then also ongoing discussions on the mailing list, and um, together with Jeffrey and with Dirk Trossen, who can't be here today, uh, we've tried to um, yeah, kind of make sense of the discussions, try to condense some statements out of uh, the discussions, uh, and yeah, just try to gather some thoughts together so that we can maybe uh, give additional input to the discussions here in the working group. And what I would like to do here today is uh, basically just to pose a few statements that we, th uh, we thought might be interesting. And um, I guess we will also see a lot of those aspects coming in the presentations afterwards, as Eve has already said. So for example, in the um, coin directions draft or afterwards in the um, transport uh, presentation. Okay, yeah, that's the intention that I already stated, um, just the interesting part, maybe the abbreviations at the bottom. So I will be using INC for in-network computing and the end-to-end -end P slash A for the end-to-end -end principle slash argument, because there's always uh, people using both of uh, both versions. And um, the slides will be quite uh, full um, because we've tried to make them self-contained so that people can also just look at them afterwards. Um, but I will try to uh, mention the most important aspects of each slide. So regarding um, the opinions that we gathered, we first had a look at different mental models uh, for in-network computing. And there we had the first aspect that was brought up that in-network computing is something like a wire with bumps in it, um, where the packet transfer emulates the wire, um, where we then still have kind of an end-to-end -end session uh, over that wire, um, but that we also extend the functionality that can then be executed in the network nodes. Um, but here, the, then the question is, what kind of functionality do we actually want to also include on those devices? Another aspect was that INC might be more about pushing innovation into the network. So basically decoupling um, the, the uh, innovation in the network from what's happening on the applications at the end houses. And then finally, we also had the view that um, and that in network computing might actually be different um, intermediate connections. So from one end to an intermediate, then from that intermediate to the next intermediate, and then finally to another endpoint, um, where then still there's some kind of this overall connection, um, but where we might have different individual ones here in the middle. So those were different mental models for in network computing that we saw, and I think some of those are already also reflected in the um, new or updated um, coin directions draft. Um, do you want to state your question directly, Colin, or should we put it to the end? Um, I, I, Colin Perkins, we can do it either way. Um, I, I, the, the first and third ones seem very concrete. The middle one seems much fuzzier. Um, yeah. I, I agree. So basically, what we just tried to gather different statements or try to group them, and those were those that we thought matched best to those mental models. And it's only basically meant as a inspiration to think about different ways of how we can think about INC. And not, so we didn't intend to really define or dig deeper into what people could have meant with those statements. Yeah. Okay. But I agree that that is uh, with what you said. 
yeah, we then had on the, uh, as the next aspect a look at the different functionality um, that INC could provide. And um, so basically, uh, that we identified three different groups of functions. Uh, the first one was basically that we just have an uh, execution environment somewhere on the network that can basically execute any kind of functionality. Um, the second one would be that we have some kind of atomic compute functions in the network that could be used by many applications. And the third one, uh, that we have really application-specific functionality. Uh, so I guess the, the third aspect is uh, what many people do with P4 or uh, a lot of additional um, applications that they try to build in the network. Um, and here we were kind of wondering where the different lines lie between those different groups of functions. So for example, where the atomic computing functionality ends and where the application-specific functionality starts and what kind of functionality the network should support, or how many functional, uh, how many functions the network support, and so on. Um, so really, this could be one way of, uh, to look at things for, from the functionality that is provided. Another, another view uh, would be the layer view. Um, so as the network is typically somewhere below transport, um, the, uh, the first question that we also had in our transport draft a, way, a while back uh, was basically if we even can perform um, functions on the transport layer given that there's an increasing trend for end-to-end -end encryption. Um, and one way of thinking of this is uh, that we could, or of the impact of the different layers we're thinking about is, um, was made at the example of routing um, where we on the one hand side saw that if we put network computing functionality on uh, layer four, um, then we could basically just have the general routing as, as we have today, and then an overlay that um, tries to route between the different coin elements, and then could also take into account, for example, the um, compute capacity of the network computing functionality. Um, however, if we push the network computing one layer down onto layer three, then we would have to uh, update basically all of the routing that we have today so that it also includes the um, compute functionality or compute capacities of um, in-network computing. Oops. Seems to be kind of a lag in between here sometimes. No words. So uh, the, the uh, third view that we had was uh, state the view on statefulness. Um, so where we basically had um, that uh, in today's internet, we often try to have as uh, little statefulness as possible so that packets can traverse the network um, rather self-contained. And here we distinct, well, we saw a distinguishment between um, the application specific functionality on the one hand side, and then the statefulness and uh, or statelessness on the other hand. And um, the, in essence, we then kind of saw different categories that might arise um, so that the non-stateful generic functionality uh, that could be provided via, uh, via in-network computing might be the best suitable option because then basically everything might still work as it works today. Um, and then we kind of had a few more steps in there uh, with stateful and application specific functionality at the bottom where we basically have um, that if some device suddenly uh, turns off, uh, then state gets lost and everything gets complicated. And we also have application specific functionality there um, so that um, it's really important for the network computing uh, devices to know what kind of functionality they have to execute at that point. Um, yeah, so those were different views and opinions that we gathered. Um, we then um, harked back to the uh, intent principle or argument. Um, that is also something that uh, we especially had in our presentation in London. Um, and here we then, based on those on this general statement, um, try to kind of find uh, different views on this end-to-end uh, -end principle or argument, as we saw quite a different different views um, there. And um, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna go through all of these statements here, 
Um, but uh, so, so maybe that's something that uh, you guys could do after the meeting as well. So have a look at those different intentions maybe and kind of find out where on this spectrum of all the different um, interpretations you stand. I guess some of you will also find your own words on, on the slide. As I said, I've mainly collected or we have mainly collected uh, statements that we've saw before. Um, and I actually have another slide with additional statements of this. Um, so basically, uh, yeah, this is uh, what has occurred during the discussions that we had after London or in London. Um, and now uh, the, the main question that arise for us was how we can actually move on from this. So how, what can we make of all the different opinions that we saw, the different views that we had, uh, and how can we move forward? And um, one question that was asked there is basically uh, how we can now actually combine or make INC work in light of the end-to-end -end principle or argument. And one aspect there was the simplicity and um, transparency aspect so that we maybe try to make functionality as simple as possible uh, and that we also uh, add uh, transparency in there. And yeah, so what are we going to do next or what are we going to try to do next? Um, actually, we're only interested in input and also only intend to provide input uh, for new discussions. Uh, as I already said in the beginning, I think that a lot of these aspects are also covered in other drafts and other presentations today. Um, and I guess what we should try to do at this point is just continue with this gathering of um, of the different opinions and try to condense that even more and even more, and then to come up with um, a joint interpretation of, of these aspects. And I think that, for example, the, the directions draft is an ideal position for that. And what we have here basically on the slide is um, that we could maybe try to define concrete research problems or concrete statements on some specific issues, try to solve those issues, um, to enhance our understanding of the overall topic and then continue from there on um, to then kind of just iterate uh, over the of, of, over our understanding of in-network computing and uh, yeah, the end-to-end -end principle. And these are all the original contributors. As I said, I've mainly just um, condensed or we've mainly condensed the statements from other people as well. So thanks to you also, if you mentioned on the slide, um, and I guess now we still have three minutes for discussions or comments on this topic. Yeah, yeah, we have a few people in the queue. So let's start from Alicia. Uh, first of all, I think uh, this effort of clarifying concepts is very important because otherwise the future would be built on this unstable ground. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out, however, I think it's really a good understanding of what is in network computing, which there it is, the question you asked, and also what is the end-to-end -end principle. I saw you actually have a quote from the E2E paper, but uh, this is a confusing point. The, I think you quoted from the abstract of the paper, but in the paper itself, there's a further elaboration on the statement you just quoted. And I, I don't know whether I should uh, stated here, it's on the, I remember clearly it's on the top of page two, if you go that far. It actually stated that, uh, to say that the, the functions that requires the end knowledge to do it right, and therefore providing that question uh, function as a future, as a feature of the communication system itself is not possible. It's not about just uh, it's optimization. It's not possible. Uh, then the quote, sometimes uh, the incomplete version of the function provided by the communication system may be useful as a performance enhancement. But, but the fundamentally, you should remember the, the sentence before it. Providing that equivalent function in the network is impossible. I, I think this support, uh, most people didn't pay enough attention. And also, I just want to point it out. Application of computation itself is at the application level. Uh, 
it's, it doesn't mean in network computing means it drag that app, the application level function into the network level. I think we should keep that clear, but the longer discussion, let's do it later. Yeah, so thanks for the... Yeah, for the, so I, 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 yeah I suggest we maybe go through the, the other question or comments because we are quite a lot of uh, items in the agenda. Okay, we do that way. So, Dirk, please. Hello, Dirk Kutschner, HKUST. Uh, thanks very much for putting this together. It's a lot of work, I, I know. So just um, regarding the end-to-end -end, um, discussion, so this is, of course, quite intricate. And um, so I agree to, to Lisha that um, this needs to be um, read carefully and also interpreted carefully. And I was just thinking uh, one way to make this more productive could be maybe to move a little bit from these high-level principles to concrete examples and then discuss what we actually want to achieve. And I think one good use case for this could be um, this like collective communications scenario. And I think the Click INC paper is also talking a little bit about these, these issues. And um, then end to end, for example, could really mean that you have some assurance and identity in the system and you know, you know who's authorized to modify what and you still um, have um, yeah, some, some assurance uh, of what's going on um, without um, um, making it impossible to have these supporting functions in the system. So in, in this direction, I think this discussion could be um, made um, a little bit more concrete and then we have better results perhaps. Yeah, that also goes in line with what I said on the I guess, second to last slide with these research problems. That works too nice. Yes, Colin. Hi, uh, Colin Perkins. I'm, all the rest I'm standing on tiptoes and this one is too low. Um, so yeah, uh, I think this is really good. Um, I think it, it's really interesting discussion to to have, and and I think trying to work through some of these issues is is critical. Um, you seem to be starting from the basis that you have to conform to the end-to-end -end architecture, and you have to conform to the layered model uh, of the way the internet is designed. Um, I'm not sure that's necessarily the right starting assumption, given that we are building something which is at least potentially quite distinct from the way the internet works. Um, and I would urge you to maybe not constrain the thinking so much by what, what works in the internet um, and to think about what might be an alternative way of framing the discussion, given that you may end up with a system which is quite radically different to the internet. Yeah, I mean, that basically boils down to in what scenario in what scenario we want to use the network computing. Um, so, I mean, if, if the intention is to have something that we could use in, on the internet as well, then we kind of have to have these limitations. But if we only try to aim at uh, more closed environments, then it might also be more of a, of a green field. Uh, uh, uh. I think I'm, I'm possibly thinking slightly more fundamentally. Um, and not, I'm not thinking internet versus limited domain. I'm thinking um, internet style protocols versus something which is radically different to the internet. Um, you know, more, more like the way ICN is potentially radically different and changes the whole model. Uh, and, and one of the possible outcomes of, a, of, of research in this space is models which fit within the, the, the broad framework of the current internet. And one of the models is something that's re so radically different that the concepts don't translate. Okay, Jörg Ott from TUM. Um, just responding to, to Colin's uh, last point, there was a very nice um, networking channel session yesterday afternoon, at, unfortunately in parallel to the plenary. And one guy put it nicely uh, when it comes to this uh, trying to deploy things in the internet. If it doesn't work, we can fix it in the overlay. And so you can always experiment with things if you seek for deployment in the in, in the internet and do something overlay style. So that shouldn't necessarily, so the, the, the fact that you want to have real world deployment doesn't necessarily need to constrain that architectural thinking. But actually, I wanted to make a different point. And, um, one of the things that has come up repeatedly in the group, and I believe this also shi did shine through your slides, 
is that we, when talking about network computing, we make different, we, we jump between different levels. You implicitly said at some point packet, even though it is by far not clear that a packet is the right level of abstraction, data unit, or whatever to work with. Um, that, of course, has an implication whether a, state, a more or less stateless P4 entity can actually do meaningful things on a, on, on a packet. Whereas for certain functions, P4 switches do just great. Whereas for others, when we, whenever we need to worry about encryption, statefulness, whatever, different units would be more appropriate. And so, so this kind of conflating, whether we are talking about a switch, a router, some application layer, entity of, of some sort of a proxy intermediary or whatever, uh, I think we need to be careful to, dis to, to disentangle those also across these discussions and make those explicit. Otherwise, we run the risk of always trying to do everything that is usually applicable only to one, to one of these different layers or to one of these different elements. And so I, that's, I think, one fundamental thing we need to take care of when trying to advance this further uh, in order to make a clear um, a distinction have then meaningful things that we can work on. I had some other point which I forgot by now, but maybe this is enough. Yeah, thanks for the addition. Uh, I agree with that. And we also had that so in our discussion. You, you will be the last one. So I lock the queue. So please keep it short. Thank you. Hi, Wes Hardiker, uh, ISI. Um, mm -hmm. To back up Colin with one more point, you know, it's hard to think about greenfield type of deployments where you can just forget everything that's going on in the network. But one one thing to remember is that the internet was created as a network of networks. And it started with individual networks that weren't necessarily doing the right thing, right? And I remember the early days of COIN, and I'm not a COIN expert, but uh, there was a good model of, of uh, an explanatory greenhouse type of you know uh, mechanism where there's lots of stuff in a greenhouse that needs to talk to each other and communicate with each other and do computation i would think in those types of environments it's like how do you solve one you know one set of examples in one network that you can completely destroy and start from scratch and then later figure out how do we expand this to sort of the, the larger internet scale because it's easier to think from one small example thanks yeah, thanks thank you thank you all the comments very useful so I could do, would you uh, uh, response in short in general for the, all these comments or we move it to uh, the list offline? Okay, so I can have left. So the next one, how are you? Are you online or in the meeting room? Yeah, I'm in the room. Okay. Okay. Please. Uh, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity to present this work published in this year's CCOM. Uh, this is joint work with my colleagues from Tsinghua University, uh, Peking University, and uh, NYU uh, Shanghai. Um, this work uh, named Click Inc., which is about uh, how we will um, automate the uh, development and deployment of uh, ink applications in, in a confined network, particularly uh, scenarios uh, uh, data center network. First, a few caveats here. So uh, in this context, the uh, ink is actually in academia is uh, very different from the coin in IE, uh, ITF or IRTF. I believe here we are actually the coin RG cover a, a lot wider uh, uh, space, uh, but it, but for us, it is the ink in network uh, in network computing is particularly um, focused on the very uh, narrow uh, scope that um, we are trying to utilize the programmable uh, switches in the data center network to offload partial application uh, functions in order to uh, either uh, improve the performance, reduce uh, application latency, or reduce the uh, system cost. For example, the number of servers required or the power consumptions used. So uh, also in this work, you will see, uh, if you look at the paper, uh, it uh, covers a lot of uh, boring details, but here uh, due to the time limits also, that might not be of interest to the group. So I will only uh, cover the uh, high level motivations and some ideas and some uh, preliminary results of this. 
Um, the network is uh, evolving from the fixed function uh, devices to SDN, for example, the open flow, um, which separates the control plane and the data plane. And eventually, uh, it we evolve to a new stage that uh, there are many um, programmable uh, data plane devices, which allow us to customize uh, network um, um, networking functions in it. And this may include the programmable ASIC, IPGA, network processor, and smart NIC, all of these different uh, heterogeneous devices. And uh, people, uh, researchers start to think about in addition to customize the uh, forwarding functions, there might be also possible to uh, execute certain computing functions uh, in these devices. Therefore, they might be able to offload a partial of the application logic uh, in those devices. Um, to use this uh, uh, limited computing capability and the memory um, or uh, some tables on the device to accelerate the uh, application. So this actually uh, lead to the uh, a very hot research area in recent years in academia. Um, okay. So uh, if you look at this uh, conference in this year, there are actually quite a few um, uh, related work has been published uh, covering the uh, key value store uh, cache uh, or the consensus algorithm and uh, distributed learning uh, in network aggregation uh, and uh, uh, database query acceleration. Or oh, there are uh, actually many more of work that cannot be covered this this single page. But however, all, all this is just uh, try to explore the uh, feasibilities of using the uh, some programmable device to support such functions. Therefore, they are all uh, usually based on very simple model to do that. Uh, they only consider, for example, only consider a single switch, how they can map the function into this single switch. And they simplify many other things like the network topology, next, uh, like if the resource is enough to support the whole function or uh, you know the, the capabilities maybe something has to be simplified or they are also need to support the basic uh, forwarding functions uh, so they make a lot of uh, simplifications on that uh, I guess I missed a slide so, so this is Okay, so there are many uh, problems of the, uh, those solutions. The first, um, uh, developers actually need uh, to program their own ink from scratch. There's not, they, they usually assume there's nothing in the switch. So, but the ink application is strongly coupled with the device. So they have to learn um, many details about the device and how to program that. And uh, uh, the, the design is very hard to reuse. And uh, also, the developer itself also need to be the net, need to be the network operator, because uh, they need to develop the complete solution cover not only the application itself but also the actually the uh, forwarding networking functions. So how you can actually forward the packet to the uh, to the tar target servers, and they need to take care of many details uh, like the packet parsing and the uh, protocol handling from layer three, layer four uh, protocols, and how to correct, uh, correctly deliver the packets in the network. And uh, so uh, they, the, 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 they are closely involved in the development and, uh, and the network operation. This is very uh, hard to decouple these two roles. And uh, the application development itself is very challenging. There are heterogeneous devices and complex topologies and also variable uh, resource and the capabilities in devices. So actually the uh, problem is very daunting. Next slide. So there are many works, but uh, uh, related works. Uh, for example, the IPDK and DOCA, they are trying to unify the programming interface on particular network uh, devices like the DPU or uh, server. However, they cannot support the cross-device programmable uh, program orchestration. Uh, another work, uh, flight plan, they, they, they can actually uh, allow users to, to partition a single application and map those uh, parts into different uh, uh, devices on the packet forwarding paths. 
Uh, however, uh, you have to user have to do that manually. They cannot automate this process. And the layer from uh, Alibaba is uh, uh, also uh, with a similar high level goal as us, they trying to automate the program partition and map this those to the different devices. Uh, however, um, their algorithm is, uh, is slow. If uh, you have a relatively large um, deployment, they will be uh, very, uh, very slow to achieve that. And also they cannot support certain devices like the uh, newly emerging smart NICs. So in this work, uh, clicking, we uh, try to decouple the uh, network uh, um, operation with the ink uh, application deployment uh, development. And uh, we also support the multi-tenant applications, try to isolate different uh, um, uh, applications uh, in a single device. So we can uh, simultaneously accommodate multiple of them. And we automate the entire process. Next slide. So the concept is you, you may already heard about the previous there's a work about int, ink router and ink, uh, no, no, there's a, a click router and click MP. So the high level idea is to make the process as simple as possible. Just a, just a, a few uh, click on the uh, mouse, you select the modularized uh, components, then combine them together, you can form an automated solution. So here we want to achieve the similar goal and uh, uh, but we are relying on some critical abstractions. We first, uh, we consider the entire network as a big, uh, data, uh, big device. We call that one big device abstraction. And so it, it gives a, a developer a sense that uh, uh, they are only dealing, dealing with a single device. They just focus on their application logic without worrying about the low level details like the network a device capability and the topology. So uh, we can see the device uh, topology and the language um, and decouple the network from the ink application itself, then make each ink a program just as a plugin. Next slide. So the high level, uh, we use a, a Python-like language uh, as a programming language for the ink. And we su uh, support three different modes. First, we build a library of templates. So we should summarize several, uh, uh, several uh, very uh, important uh, ink uh, applications. So uh, users can just uh, use this template to quickly uh, instantiate an uh, ink application. And also, they can also use uh, the, this template as some mod mod modular uh, components uh, in the library. They can uh, build their own um, applications uh, from based on these templates. And we also allow user to actually just uh, from program from scratch. They can uh, just uh, do their uh, customized uh, uh, functions. It's also possible. Next slide. So the high level um, uh, architecture is like this. So, so uh, we first develop the uh, program using the language uh, we mentioned before. Then we have a, a front uh, end compiler uh, the compiler basically uh, compiles, uh, converts the program into the intermediate representative. And uh, then next step, we'll um, uh, just uh, consider the uh, available resource and network topology and the capability of the devices. Many constraints are considered then we can map the program into the devices. So it's possible we need to partition the single application into multiple devices. So all of this is done in this uh, in this step. Uh, we need to consider many constraints, also minimize uh, the partition cost. And after that, we, uh, we we know which part of the program map to which devices. After we have that, for each uh, snippet of the program, we will uh, have its own target devices. Then we will use a, we will convert the program into the target device language. Then maybe use the target devices. Of, a compiler to further program this device uh, into the target uh, into the target executable file. So uh, uh, after that, we uh, we can we finish the deployment of the entire program. Next slide. So uh, I may want uh, due to the time I may want to uh, skip this process. But the the key point here is uh, previously. 
uh, usually we uh, the critical part of this is actually maps uh, how we map the entire program into the different uh, devices. So uh, usually uh, method if we use the ILP or SMT type of a res uh, solver to solve this this uh, complex program. However, if uh, uh, we consider the networks a relatively large network scale, uh, these methods are very slow. So, uh, for example, the Laro use the SMT solver to uh, to solve the problem, then uh, the performance is not good. But for us, we uh, develop a, a dynamic programming based algorithm to uh, uh, simplify the, the mapping process and uh, we, uh, we can achieve the similar result uh, uh, like the SMT um, but uh, it's much much faster on a large scale network. Next slide. So yeah this, uh, this uh, slide just show a little bit more details how we uh, abstract the, the, the entire program into a, a instruction based graph then based on the graph and uh, uh, the, the device uh, type on the on the on the following paths that we can uh, partition this graph later on the layer based uh, um, partition then we can map each part into the thing, uh, different devices so we also annotate each applic uh, each ink application so this annotation is uh, uh, carried with the designs and which can be uh, used to, uh, to allow us to remove a certain uh, ink application when we when it's no longer needed, uh, so we can release the resource for other applications. Next slide. So we now use a. Can you please conclude quite quickly. Yeah. To yeah, yeah. And so, there's people in the queue. Okay. We have a software based emulator. We use uh, several behavior models based on Top Tofino and Tr Trident 4 and IPG. Uh, uh, to map it into a fat tree based uh, data, uh, data center. And we also have uh, uh, several physical switch devices uh, to build a test bed for that. Next slide. So the uh, experiment results show that we can actually uh, fully utilize a different uh, uh, resource in different devices. And our uh, programming, you can see for different applications, we use much shorter, uh, fewer lines of code to describe the entire application compared with using other languages. And also uh, our dynamic programming mapping program allow us to achieve the similar uh, performance as a uh, result as M SMT, but uh, with much shorter time. Next slide. So you can see we have achieved much better scalability with a very large uh, uh, topology. You can, uh, the, the performance is linearly increased, but uh, if you use as uh, MT, the, the time increase exponentially. We also demonstrate how we can do the incremental deployment uh, for certain set of applications one by one. So yeah, um, maybe you can read these slides and um, uh, so any questions? So. Yeah, Dirk, please. Yeah, Dirk Kutscher, HKUSD. Thanks very much for bringing this work uh, to us. Um, so this group has been, um, say, discussing or had, had like, a, like a creative tension between say distributed computing concepts and then um, trying to um, um, leverage programmable data plane uh, like P4. Yes. And um, also in the light of this end-to-end -end discussion, it was always quite interesting to see also how could we make productive use of, of um, these uh, facilities. And so the, the one big device abstraction is a kind of interesting way um, mm -hmm. of dealing with it. Um, one question. So, um, what's the failure model um, for for the system? So, um, what happens if something goes wrong at, at runtime? Do you have a concept for that? What, what's the what, what, what's the failure failure model? model. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a, a good question. We that, that will be the future work. Actually, we now have a, some. Uh, we, we always assume the uh, regular topology, and uh, so. Without consider the failure model, yeah, that's a good question. And also, we have a, we we consider there's a common base forwarding program. So therefore, we can decouple the forwarding with the function itself. So in the uh, uh, entire working flow, the last step actually is uh, involve how we merge this uh, app uh, ink functions to the base forwarding functions. So 
the uh, program developer doesn't need to worry about how how the, the package actually forward it. Yeah, Lisa, please. Uh, Lisa Zhang from UCLA. Uh, I think it's an interesting idea about uh, treating the whole network as a super device so that you can perform optimization. Uh, related question is that, uh, is this a privately owned network and therefore you, you have no security considerations? Yeah, we <laughs> assume this uh, is only uh, meaningful in a very confined network. For example, the data center are owned by a single owner. So, but they can, um, you know, use a resource, a server resource, a network resource to uh, simultaneously support different applications. I agree that with that confined environment, this is, uh, you know, great uh, optimization. But that assumption probably should be stated with a big font. Yeah. To make people understand the scope of the work. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Thank you, Hao Yu. Let's move to the next one. Thank you. Mingyuan. Yeah, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Mingyuan Zhang from Technical University of Denmark. So uh, I'm a final year PhD student at, uh, supervised by Professor Lars Dittmann. And it's my pleasure to be here to share the, our work prepared in network analysis for smart IoT gateways. And uh, this work was done when I was a visiting PhD student at the research group led by Professor Noah Zuberman. So it is a joint work together with Changgang, Lars, and Noah. Um, so, yeah. So last year uh, during the CONRG session in London, our colleague Changgang has shared uh, uh, practices and lessons learned from the in network classification. So the core idea of in network classification is uh, to offload the uh, machine learning inference to the programmable network devices. So it can train, uh, map a trained machine learning model to the programmable network devices. So it is the in-network machine learning inference concept as introduced by uh, Dr. Song in previous presentation. So uh, last year, uh, Changgang has introduced uh, two representative work, uh, EZ and Planter. So uh, Planter gives this uh, rapid prototyping framework and solutions to uh, lower down the bar to develop this in-network classification uh, design. So, so far it supports more than 11 machine learning models, uh, including the uh, 15 variants, depending on the resource constraints and the devices. And it can also be run on multiple uh, hardware targets, such as the programmable switches, uh, FPGA, DPUs, and so on. So in this case, we have seen that it can achieve line rate performance as well as the uh, uh, benefits brought to uh, services such as the uh, security analysis, analytic detection, and so on. So starting from there, we were wondering uh, if we can utilize this machine learning, in-network machine learning capability in other scenarios. So then we start to think about the IoT scenarios. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So the, in IoT scenarios, uh, one of the motivation is that uh, this year we have seen an increasing interest and study on uh, utilizing the uh, machine learning capability for data analysis in IoT networks. So then we started to wonder uh, how in-network classification can bring any benefits to this kind of uh, uh, services. So a little bit background here is that, um, so, this year, we have seen the best development of 5G and even the upcoming 6G. So 5G, uh, in 5G, there is uh, requirements about the ultra reliable low latency uh, communication. So specifically, uh, it requires the uh, performance uh, in different IoT use cases, such as in industrial uh, process automation. This kind of service will require the low latency lower than the 15 millisecond. So that means we also need some uh, advanced uh, uh, analysis and monitoring solutions for, uh, to adapt to this kind of low latency requirements. And also at the same time, uh, we have seen an in increasing concern on the IoT security. And uh, we have seen that the uh, attacks are uh, uh, evolving and uh, 
with changing patterns stealthily. So that raises the emergent uh, attack variance and poses the threat to the uh, network infrastructure. And meanwhile, on the user side, this uh, IoT devices are quite distributed with the limited contributing resources. So that indicates the lack of uh, security measures. So that leads to the question we want to ask here. So uh, d combining all these factors, we have seen the fastest spreading threats with the changing patterns in IoT networks. So can uh, in-network classification do something for it? So well, if we want to utilize the machine learning capability, one of the typical solution is that we can deploy this machine learning based analysis uh, in the cloud. Um, so it can uh, utilize the abundant uh, rich resources on the, on the cloud to give a advanced uh, analysis and analyze the complicated uh, attacks, but it, uh, it is also limited in fast reaction. So that is what we're bringing this in network classification uh, solution. So with the in-network classification capability, we can offload the machine learning inference process from the cloud to the uh, IoT edge. So in this case, we can uh, analyze the traffic uh, at the time when they arrive at the edge devices and decide whether they are malicious or benign and decide whether we would forward it or not. So in this case, we can achieve a fast mitigation so, but when we are, during our development of this idea, we have met three main design challenges. So firstly is the, uh, can we achieve this function on uh, cheap IoT gateway devices? Because the prior work mainly focuses on the uh, uh, performance on the uh, high performance devices. So, but in IoT networks, most of the devices, they are quite cheap with uh, uh, limited resources. And the second issue is, uh, uh, we also have seen the needs of uh, round the clock security operation in IoT networks. So can we support a continuous defense or a continuous model uh, uh, based uh, analysis towards this emerging threat? And thirdly is this distributed deployment on the, on the IoT edge. So I will introduce our solutions one by one. So uh, for the, regarding the first two challenges, we present our uh, solution Papier. So it achieves the uh, real-time traffic analysis by introducing the in-network classification uh, into the IoT gateway. So uh, we prototype our work on a Raspberry Pi and it's based on this Puppy platform. So it runs the P4-based uh, uh, platform uh, inside the Raspberry Pi. And uh, so in this case, we uh, think about, we thought about the resources are quite risk constrained. So we utilize the uh, tree-based machine learning model inside this uh, prototype to lower down the uh, uh, resources, uh, resource consumption and uh, given this uh, lightweight deployment. And uh, so the graph on the right corner presents a, a general overview of the workflow of this Papier design. So it forms a closed loop and uh, involves three main components, uh, attack defender, uh, log labeler, and model mapper. So model mapper is the one that maps this stream based model into the data plane and is based on the planter. And the attack defender is the one mainly plays the role here to achieve the uh, in-network analysis and uh, mitigation. And we also have the log labeler here, mainly for a runtime model updates. So it actually, enables this continuous defines. Uh, so a little bit more details about this design. So we try to uh, see whether we can achieve it at runtime, specifically for the IoT gateway scenario, because we want to avoid uh, function recompilation to lower down the maintenance overhead. So in that case, we introduce the digest-based logging uh, method. Uh, and also we introduce the supervised-based uh, uh, labeler to proactively labeling the connected records and also trigger the model retraining process. So also when we get this remapped model, we found another issue that uh, when we try to insert this model uh, into the data plane at runtime, it somehow disrupt the uh, forwarding uh, process. So then we introduced this uh, shadow uh, table updates to uh, enable the hitless uh, 
uh, remapping and insertion of the regenerated table rules and uh, table models. So that is the basic idea of the papier. And uh, besides the prototype on the, yeah, besides the prototype on the Raspberry Pi, we also have it run on the a real gateway. And uh, we utilize the public data set to evaluate our solutions. Uh, and it, it verifies that our solution can increase the uh, uh, accuracy on emerging attacks and also achieves the millisecond mitigation performance. And we also are evaluated on it uh, uh, about the overhead it brought to the Raspberry Pi and it shows that it gives negligible data uh, and uh, only 88% on the CPU utilization. And so, so far, all the, uh, this popular solution is based on the single device deployment. But in IoT scenario, uh, devices are deployed in a distributed way. So we then uh, introduced the uh, Flip 4. So to explore how the solution can be scalable to a distributed scenario. So in this case, we uh, deploy the Papier and uh, also which is the in-network classification in the distributed gateway scenarios. And we uh, introduced the federated idea to uh, manage the model training and update process among the di distributed nodes. So uh, with this federated idea, we can not only share and uh, coordinate this model updates, but also it can give this uh, model sharing process in uh, relatively privacy preserving way. And the right corner presents uh, pre our preliminary evaluation and it shows that this design gives the uh, uh, accurate performance with the uh, relatively low communication overhead. So yeah, to give a summary, uh, in this uh, work, we want to uh, illustrate that the in-network classification can also bring benefits to the IoT scenario. And uh, it is feasible on the cheap IoT gateway devices. And uh, due to our uh, design and due to the introduction of the in-network classification, it can uh, give this uh, swift analysis towards the emerging attacks and uh, react efficiently towards the, against this uh, detected incidents. And also with this flip four idea, it can be scalable to distributed devices. And we are still exploring more details about it. Uh, for further work, we are trying to uh, study how to uh, optimize our resources on those chip devices. And also we are trying to enable more services. And uh, if you're interested in this work, you are very welcome to scan this QR code. So to access or to our uh, open source solutions and we are actively maintaining that. So lastly, uh, we list our work here. Yeah, thank you. We list our work here. So, uh, and we want to, we would like to acknowledge the founding uh, and, our, uh, and our colleague for their support. And that's pretty about the sharing today. Uh, thank you very much. And I'm happy to take any comments and questions. Dirk Kutscher, HKUC, thanks very much. Um, so um, just to categorize this, so in the taxonomy of things that we are discussing here, this seems to be like a traditional, um, like in network function, like yeah. de -packet, de packet inspection and so on. Um, so question on your work, what is the assumption on the traffic that you are analyzing with respect to encryption, for example? Yeah, thank you for this question. So it's a very good one. So because uh, in IoT scenario and in IoT gateway, we are assuming that uh, due to the consideration of the uh, power consumption, all the traffic is in plain text. So uh, they are not configured with a very uh, strong encryption strategy. So in this case, we can parse more information than we want, and it would enable a better performance. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Lisha, please. By the way, it's not me, this is a newcomer. I did before her. 
Uh, hello, everyone. I'm sorry about this because uh, I haven't found the, the right tools. So uh, my name is uh, Huda Sheikh. I am from Tunisia. I am new cameras to ITF program. I want to thank you so much for this great presentation. And I want to know if you have evaluated the energy conception in your uh, scenario. Yeah, thank you very much for this question. So we didn't directly uh, uh, test the energy consumption because uh, when we try to test it, we find that the the change is very hard to uh, make distinguish. So we use the CPU utilization and temperature to uh, partially reflect the power consumption uh, metric. Thank you. If there are no further questions or comments, let's move to the next one. Thank you, Ming Ming Yuan. Thank you. So let's start the draft update from Yongha. Good morning, this is Chang Ha Hong from Atri in Korea. And this draft is about the use case analysis for computing in the network. And I have been presented at uh, last meeting in San Francisco. And this is the reminder that I have uh, introduced about this, uh, the, the, the status of the draft. So, uh, the leader of the draft has, has changed it to me. And then we, uh, at the last time, we proposed to change the title from the uh, use case analysis to the ch research challenge of the computing in the network. And also we plan to uh, make the scope of the draft broader and more generalized according to the new title. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't updated and submit to uh, for this meeting. But uh, what we would like to do is uh, uh, we have collected a uh, quite number of the uh, new research challenges. So we I, I present today, and I, I would like to get the feedback from the floor, and then we reflect the comment to the draft. So uh, uh, we decided to uh, update the draft later on. So according to the new uh, title, uh, we gonna delete the chapter three, which it was the coin use case taxonomy. I think we it did, this is not needed anymore. And then uh, the requirement as well. We try to focus on the research challenging in this draft. So, uh, but we keep the opportunities for coin and then research questions from the coin use case. This has been uh, done already. So we'll keep that. And then the, chap the session five, the research challenge will be the provided yearly in this draft later. And before I pre provide the uh, research challenge the list. Uh, we categorize the research challenge in in like a seven category. So here we have uh, this table shows the uh, main category as well as the sub category and the way the description and also the challenges that I'll present in the later. Uh, we we align to the all the uh, number of the challenges to the this category. So, uh, well, to go over more detail about the challenges, research challenges, I'm not go through details in this table, but just briefly uh, take a look the uh, read the category what we have here is the first one is the coin fundamental, and the second one is the enabler uh, to tackle key operational challenges. And the 
third one is the liability and robustness. Um, and then the security and privacy and ethics. Okay. Yes, slide, next, next slide. slide, please. And then uh, we have we'll have the interoperability and legacy integration, and then the last one is economics and uh, business perspectives. Next slide, please. And now uh, uh, we have like a sixteen research challenges in this presentation. So please read the uh, challenges carefully and then give us some feedback about it. So the first one is a heterogeneous network support. So um, how can coin solution uh, cater to the network with the mixed computational capability and how can they ensure the consistent performance? And the second one is the, a dynamic resource allocation. Uh, so um, how can node decide which task to compute and which one uh, has to be forward? And then the security and privacy concern is the, how do we ensure the data security, especially when some com uh, computations are uploaded uh, to intermediate load that might, may not be fully trusted. And then uh, optimize the data transfer is the, how can you design the protocol that decide the optimal location for computation versus the simple data transport. Thank you. And the state management is the, when computational functions are executed inside the network, the managing the state become a challenge. So how can stateful computations be maintained and uh, migrated or restored after this uh, dis disruptions. And then the programming abstraction is the, uh, the coin needs a novel uh, programming model that allows the uh, developer to specify where and how their application logic should run within the network. And then the latency concern, uh, which is the uh, coin reduces the latency because the computation can happen closer to the data source, but uh, introducing the computation within the network uh, can also increase the latency if it is not managed properly. So uh, it needs to determine the balance uh, and identify the use case where the latency penalties can maximize. And then the third tolerance and reliability and uh, the Introducing the computation in network nodes uh, requires a new strategy for the fault to tolerance. So how do we handle the node failure, especially during an active computation? And how can we ensure the data integrity and reliability in such scenarios? Next slide, please. And then the um, interoperability and standardization. Uh, there will be a need for standard protocol and interfaces and the practices that ensure the seamless interoperability between different vendors and devices. And then the load balancing is where the coin, the network node will not just handle the data, but also computation tasks. So uh, 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 it, uh, the, the computational task needs to be evenly distributed and no node becomes a bottleneck due to the computational overhead. And then the energy efficiency, uh, the implementing computation at every node, at that node can uh, increase the energy consumption. So it needs to find the efficient algorithm and hardware solutions to keep the energy cost minimal. And then uh, scalability, uh, it needs to ensure that the coin can scale efficiently without compromising performance or increasing the complexity becomes this uh, as complexity. So the so it needs to be a scalable in both in terms of the network size and the computational demand. 
and migration and flexibility, uh, um, given the dynamic nature of the network law, there could be a scenario where an active computation might need to be migrated from one to another node. So how can this be achieved seamlessly without the data loss or excessive latency? And then uh, economic and business model. Uh, how do we model the cost associated with the coin? So how do ISPs and cloud pro uh, providers bill their customers when computation is distributed across the network? Mm. And then the evaluation metrics and benchmarks, uh, the standard the benchmark and evaluation metrics will be needed to gauge the performance, efficiency, and suitability of the coin solution for various applications. And the last one is integration with the legacy system. So the, uh, how, how can the legacy system can be in integrated or the upgraded to support the coin without significant disruption or cost? Yeah, this is all we have collected so far. And please give us a comment about the research challenges. And then we'll, we'll get the comment and we reflect the comment toward the draft. So we'll submit the draft as a new version. Yes. Comments? Yeah, thank you. So um, looking at the four slides of the research challenges that you just outlined, they appear to me fairly generic in the sense of being applicable to essentially every distributed system you could possibly construct. And now you had a, you started out with the statement that you have been broadening the scope and I'm, I'm wondering whether this is actually a very useful exercise or a, a helpful in getting actually a concise and uh, reasonable document ever finished. We have been usually pretty good at working with rather tidy scope documents in order to um, wrap up the respective work for something. This bears a bit the risk of trying to boil the ocean in this one because you never might know when you are really finished. And so all these vague statements about um, research challenges that again could be applied to any distributed system may be an indicator that the scope is too broad. So I think it's worthwhile to have a discussion on how much scope there should actually be um, in order to have this a fair chance to get it to completion at some point. At the moment, I, I see this going way overboard. Yeah, thank you. I think I understood and I will try to add more uh, spit, try to do more specific way or make it narrow down. Thank you. Roland Bless KIT. Uh, just a quick comment to, with respect to the reliability that also comes back to the end to end argument. I mean, one of the consequences of the end to end argument is that you, if you have less functionality inside the network, the more robust it is because less things can break. And so here I was missing an aspect like um, what about isolation? I mean, if you put functionality inside the network, things get more fragile potentially if you have side effects that one computational function maybe has, if things fail, has side effects uh, on others. And so that kind of how can you achieve the isolation is potentially also a research question that comes back to the end-to-end the -end argument effect. Well, we'll consider as a challenge your comment. <clears throat> yes, thank you for providing such a comprehensive list of challenges. They are very real and uh, useful, but uh, I, I, my feeling is that it's a little bit less structured. Um, 
many of them, I, I can see they are actually close related or maybe there's a relationship with them. So it, uh, my suggestion is better to organize these different challenges and grouping them uh, based on different categories that can help us better understand that. And also, um, as you said, uh, uh, the first uh, com command said that maybe uh, the use cases and that the, the scope is too broad now. So uh, maybe different, uh, you know, aspect of this uh, uh, problem space may face different um, challenges. Uh, so it's uh, better to, you know, again, uh, maybe we can have classification on the different uh, use cases. And so we have, have a fixed set of scenarios and for each scenario, maybe have a unique set of challenges. So if we have this kind of organization that will help us better understand this problem scope. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for your comment. For the first co comment that uh, actually, we had the, the categories. Let me show the table. Yeah, I haven't discussed the, uh, pro the, the, the provided the details about the, these categories, but but when, once we draft, we update the draft. The, the all the uh, the challenges will be described under the certain categories, so it will be grouped. And the, for the second one. Uh, also, I already uh, replied that we'll consider make the scope narrow down later. Thank you. So, Diego, you will be the last one. Okay, okay, perfect. From my side. Uh, no, is it, is it a comment in the same sense that uh, George was mentioning before that this was, I mean, the, the, the definition of this, many of the problems as it were shown there were very much general problems for distributed systems. Probably here, and I would say that uh, it's just a, a suggestion of how you can uh, uh, focus on this. And something that came to my mind, for example, when you were talking about uh, load balancing, is more than it's about uh, how to explore a convergence of different techniques, because right now you have load balancing in, in, cloud, uh, in cloud environments, and you have load balancing in the network, and how they can be combined and or integrated, because it's not that we have to invent a new mechanism for load balancing, it's, it's that we, we, we should be able to integrate them and make them consistent. And just, uh, just an example, so probably it's, it's about this convergence or, or alignment of them, trying to identify which are the challenges for aligning them, not the, the general challenge, but the challenge of the current solutions that we have right now for the network, that we have right now for the, uh, the general distributed computing and how they can be mixed, just as, a, as an idea. Okay, thank you. I think the, uh, uh, the time um, is not enough to, uh, to talk about it. So I, I just give the outline of the, what we are uh, trying to uh, think about the challenges. That's I think how it look it looks too general things today. I think maybe next time we'll, we'll bring uh, uh, we update the challenges so more specifically to discuss. Thank you. Thank you, Yonghua. And uh, let's go to the next one, Dirk. Okay, thank you. Uh, good morning. So this is um, joint work with um, Jagot and uh, Timo Pekain. And uh, so earlier um, today, so Colin um, alluded to the, the concept or the idea that um, so coin could also take a say more um, so say fundamental perspective um, on what uh, computing in the network uh, means and maybe doesn't have to be so much constrained to um, say existing um, say concepts or business models that are often floating around and um, so interestingly when this group was formed a few years ago there was a discussion uh, how should this actually be named so like in network computing was a popular term at the time and I we also um, saw it today and it was um, Dave Oren at the time who made the um, proposal to actually call this computing in the network. Um, so like a slightly, uh, slightly subtle um, difference name, different name to express um, the idea that this is not just about, you know, um, 
the traditional concepts of um, connecting um, compute servers, so like you do in edge computing or just normal client server um, settings and so on. Um, so the idea was to um, so have a scope that includes distributed computing concepts, uh, network data plane um, probability, and then try to figure out um, how these um, different worlds could fit together. And this is a little bit the spirit of um, um, this draft here. And um, so it hasn't been uh, presented here for some, some time. And um, so let me just uh, run you through um, the, the whole structure and give you some idea what this is about. So we have already seen today that in-network computing can be conceived in many different ways. So um, all very old concepts like active networking, we have seen today data plane, probability, um, running virtualized functions, things like service chaining, so really more like mechanistic things that um, are, have been done in the ITF, but also uh, general distributed computing. And so this, this draft tries to uh, kind of make some sense out of this. I'm not saying we have uh, succeeded yet, but um, we try to propose um, so a direction also capturing the discussion that has been going on so far. And um, so list some say more researchy research questions um, as well. Um, hmm. Next slide, please. <laughs> okay. So we are um, talking about these different types of network computing systems and trying to um, disentangle um, a little bit. So um, trying to make it clear what is actually what, what is the difference and so on. So there's a bit of a terminology part um, as well. Um, and um, then there's a section that tries to characterize um, so um, like these like main strands. So um, computing in the network versus packet processing versus network computing, what I mentioned earlier. And then just trying to illustrate this with a few examples. And then in the end, we are distilling a kind of shorter but not very short list of challenges. So yeah, this is a um, problem that um, I heard in all the meetings that the clicker doesn't really work. Um, okay, so yeah, the different types of in-network computing systems. Um, 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 so active networking, edge computing, um, data plane probability, um, say application layer, data processing frameworks, and things like um, service chaining. Um, so in network computing, what we are typically doing is um, we are using just networking to connect compute instances. So that could be you know, execution environments, VMs, microservice instances, and so on. And so quite often there is some, some kind of interaction types on top of a um, black box network model. So like RPC, RESTful communication, and so on. Um, so we know CDNs who could, got, could probably fall into this category. Um, so from our perspective, this is not really computing in the network, this is just plain old connected computing. Uh, so we, we, are, we are using this every day. Um, so packet processing, um, that refers to, um, we are basically middle boxes. So maybe the um, IoT security gateway that we saw earlier falls into this category. So like transparent middle boxes that uh, apply some processing on the packets. Um, so here we, it was more like the packet inspection, but you could also imagine some transformation uh, in, in some scenarios. Um, of course, quite often this is ignoring security and um, like data provenance and so on. And um, active networking um, could maybe be seen as an abstraction. So for programming this packet processing from an endpoint perspective. So programming processing then later uh, down the, the path um, um, of a, Packet flow. Um, and contrasting this with data plane programming, so um, we have like seen examples. So these are like abstractions of different types of network switch hardware, typically, or I will say like network hardware um, in general, from more like a switch or network programming perspective. And um, so the challenge that the Click uh, um, INC work also had that was that the programs that you can actually create there are very much constrained by the capabilities um, um, of those platforms. So limited instruction set, limited memory. Um, and so typically what you have there is 
things that operate on flow abstraction, so individual packets. And um, so, yeah, basically doing things like match action style processing. And so this is, of course, very interesting and can be put to use, um, for example, with this, um, um, like one, one big um, system abstraction that we saw. Um, but the challenge here is also um, in distributed computing systems, normally the units um, uh, of communication are not packets, right? So you have more like application data units. If you um, yeah, include security, then encryption or um, um, say authenticity functions, then this becomes very hard for these systems to do a, a useful um, job here. So one challenge or one, I think, yeah, one interesting challenge in our work here um, we think is um, making productive use um, of, of these kind of really powerful um, but really low layer um, platforms. In the IETF, uh, people have a lot of experience with uh, network functions virtualization. So this is just network computing applied to telco functions, uh, uh, put bluntly. And some of these functions, they do things like processing and forwarding packets. And then you could maybe steer the forwarding with things like software-defined networking and so on. Next slide. Um, okay, and then service functioning is maybe a more dynamic way of just steering the traffic in, in those um, system and is implemented by encapsulation. And so now comparing all of these things, um, so sometimes network computing and packet processing also go well together. So for example, in um, network virtualization, you can achieve through data plane programming and to, to provide connectivity between VMs. There are things like Etsy, multi-access edge computing and network slicing in this category. But this, again, this is not really um, computing in the network um, in, our, in our mind. So what we think is quite interesting. So earlier, um, uh, uh, how you made the statement that in academia, um, uh, in network computing has a very um, say limited focus or like a specific focus on this data plane and mobility things. Um, that's of course only one part of academia. There's another part of academia that is more computer science or distributed computing oriented. And they are looking more at, the, at these problems, right? So there is a range of very successful application layer distributed computing systems. Um, also in uh, like machine learning training and so on. And these are um, quite elaborate when it comes to programming models, abstractions for that and so on. But they could also really benefit from a much better support and better integration uh, in the network. And I, we think that this is an interesting question. So how could the network support such systems better? So this could be seen as a resource allocation problem you could think about uh, you know, joint resource optimization for computing, networking, and caching, and so on. And we have been discussing this a little bit uh, in this uh, draft. Um, there's one section that um, then explains a few examples that we picked. This is maybe a little bit eclectic at the moment, um, but so we picked uh, one system that we developed um, earlier, um, computing, computer first networking, ICN, which takes a really different perspective. So fully decentralized um, computing framework, Turing complete um, based on, on, on ICN. So a bit what Colin also alluded to earlier. And then we, we compared this or kind of listed a few other things that people may be more familiar with like um, actor model things, uh, stream processing, and also talked a bit about our distributed machine learning, um, which is also quite interesting from a um, computing network perspective. And then finally, I, I don't have time to go through this, but um, so we are, we are picking um, some challenges that we think are relevant for, for research. And um, so let's, let me not read this to you, um, but um, if you're interested, please have a closer look and tell us if anything um, is missing. And then as next steps, what we think could be useful, um, so this, this week there is um, a discussion on collective communications. And so um, that's like one communication um, approach in machine learning training. And so we talked about this a little bit, but we think this could be more specific. 
And um, so later there is a draft uh, presentation on transport abstractions. This could also tie in to this discussion that's um, our intended next steps. From a maturity level perspective, we think this will probably need a few more iterations. So our goal is to capture the discussion that's going on here in the group. So um, we will probably see this a few more uh, meetings. Thank you. Yeah, hi, uh, Alconso. Um, thanks for the work. Um, I have had a look at the draft as well, so I like your angle there. Uh, one question that came to my mind, especially given um, maybe my first presentation today and also the uh, use case or former use case analysis draft is how we actually make this not a battle on different fronts where we come to diff or, or basically do stuff at the same time that we could join together and how we actually make this a, a joint effort where we can uh, make the best of every angle that we have here. Yeah, thanks. I had the same thought when I saw the earlier presentations. Um, that's definitely something that we should uh, talk about. Um, maybe we can find some time um, this week even, or could be also for an interim meeting. I think we have um, several things that are somehow touching uh, on, on, say, related areas. And um, this is, I think it's, it's not a problem because these things have been developed in parallel somehow, but I mean, now maybe the good, good time to re re reconciliate the, these things. Yeah. yeah, let's talk. Yeah, Alex Clem, future way. Um, uh, I think so, so one comment that I would have, I think there are a lot of things that we could do and there are a lot of potential challenges and so forth, mm. which are there. But one thing that I'm missing a little bit is the why, right? What are the problems that we want to ultimately solve with this that you cannot solve, uh, well, basically with, without this? And I think uh, probably maybe to, to orient and articulate some of those research challenges better, it might help to, in the end, you had some examples, but to perhaps try to, to, to ex extract basically some of those problems and then basically look at solutions for this so that we don't look at it just for its own sake. Right. So, I mean, I, I, um, I did a bad job in explaining this here. Um, in the example, this is a section we uh, try to motivate um, this. Um, perhaps we, we could do a better job. Um, um, yeah, we'll look at that. Thank you. Yeah, maybe. Uh, David Ru from Huawei Technologies. Um, thanks for your presentation. Um, it's indeed it's very interesting. Um, especially, I'm looking at the, your next steps. I uh, want to address the collective communication uh, part. Um, I don't know whether you know um, we have a side meeting in some room about collective communication optimization, mm. where um, uh, we will also present uh, one of our drafts called the signaling uh, in network computing. Uh, we try to address that as well. So um, we may discuss about that. That's, um, and I'm also interested in your direction, maybe we can um, talk about it or discuss for the new transport for the correct. Yes, that's at uh, 3 p.m. this afternoon. Yes, 2.30, uh, probably. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, uh, Jeffrey He from a City University of Hong Kong. So without my uh, chair hat. So I have two, uh, well, one comment and the other is question actually. So the, the comment is about the uh, communication, uh, collective communication in this slide. So in my view, collective communication is not more specific but more genetic than machine translation because it's a basic function can support many uh, distributed applications, uh, distributed computings. And uh, aggregation function is just one of the communication, uh, collective communication, if we uh, look at the definition of collective communication in the HPC community. That's my uh, comment on this. And uh, my question my question is that, so you mentioned uh, at the beginning of your slide, you mentioned that you will, you will propose a particular direction for coin. But uh, the name of your jobs are directions. So I'm wondering if you are trying, to, you are planning to explore alternative directions, or we, or you, uh, stick to one specific direction. Thank you. 
Yeah, that's a tough, tough one. Uh, so, um, yeah, well, the, the idea really was to kind of, um, kind of set a scope for the, the work in this group. And um, so we think, of course, the more we can narrow this down, um, the better. Um, I would say we are not yet quite yet at this stage, but um, I think there is now uh, an em emerging better understanding uh, what, what the original contribution of this um, group could be. So, um, it would, I mean, we, we are not nearly finished, but we, we think um, this draft could, um, yeah, could make, could, could kind of characterize um, the problems and, um, you know, make, make a understandable um, description of the research problem and um, say the, the challenges that uh, it includes. Um, of course, th there are still different perspectives, right? Some people coming more from a data plane um world. Um, so it's probably not very wise to try to really have like the one unified um, view of, of doing things, but um, at least, you know, making it a little bit more uh, concrete and a little bit more narrow. Like, that's our goal here. Um, I admit that I didn't read your draft, but I, I really enjoyed this presentation. I think it's really important to clarify the concept and the definitions. That's the very first step towards a great work. Uh, I didn't read before, but I will read your, your draft afterwards and hope I can uh, get some um, comments in. Thank you. Yeah, that would be highly appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so if there are no further questions, let's thank you, Dirk. Next one, how you again? Thank you. In this uh, talk, I will introduce uh, a new job talking about the requirement for a general transport protocol for a sp uh, specific site of uh, in network applications. Um, next slide, please. So uh, still in the narrow sense of uh, uh, ink, we are talking about how to use a programmable switch uh, to accelerate the applications. If we take a closer look at the uh, current uh, uh, very promising uh, applications, which include in-network aggregation, uh, caching, and agreement. They all follow the uh, same uh, pattern. We can call that remote procedure call. It involves a, a sender will uh, send a single packet um, with a message and expect uh, some reply from the server uh, to uh, uh, also as a single packet to get the result back. Um, so uh, in this, uh, the, the computing can be solely or partially done by the network devices uh, in the network. And uh, the results can also be replied from the device or from the uh, end server. So, but they all follow the similar um, application pattern. Next slide. But, but appear, uh, apparently first thing we can observe is that it, it truly uh, breaks the end-to-end -end principle of the transport uh, protocol because um, in, even in the network, we need to uh, touch the packet payload. So we need to uh, at least uh, uh, cross the transport layer to reach the uh, application layer data. So this, we can see this is the new uh, end to middle point to end rather than the pure end to end model. So we somehow need to support that uh, at the transport layer. Next slide. And we also have some uh, classification on the different uh, ink service model and also the communication pattern. Uh, for the model, we have the device only model, which means uh, the entire computing is done in the network devices without involving the uh, server. So we call that uh, uh, device only. Also, uh, the, the, the job can be joint, jointly done by the device and uh, the server and the final result is only returned from the server. We call that uh, a device and server model. And finally, uh, there's a hybrid hybrid mode hybrid model, which means uh, uh, also the packet will be sent uh, through the internet devices and reach the uh, final uh, destination server. However, the the result can be either returned from switch or from the uh, server. So that's all possible depending. Um, if the, uh, the the computing can be done in switch or it can be partially done. 
Um, on the other hand, we have different com communication patterns. For example, the first one we call that sync, uh, synchronized uh, colla uh, collaboration. Uh, of, uh, you, you can imagine they said including the uh, collective communication patterns, which uh, need the, all the uh, joint workers to synchronize their uh, request. Um, on the other hand, there's other application like the MapReduce. They uh, actually doesn't require the uh, strict uh, synchronization between the workers. So we call that a synchronous uh, collaboration. And uh, finally, some other application like the uh, uh, key value store uh, caching. Um, we call that, this is just a, do the individual requirement, uh, request, request query from the one server to another query server. So it doesn't need a collaboration between multiple workers. So we call that uh, uh, individual request. So you can see in this uh, table, we have some crossing that that's based on the, some existing uh, solutions. They actually take this kind of a combination um, to, uh, uh, to, to combine the different service model and different communi communication pattern. However, they all follow the same, like I said, same remote procedure call like uh, uh, application pattern. Next slide. So yeah, but they all share some, uh, should share some common uh, transport layer services. Uh, if uh, we don't have this uh, unified uh, transport solution, then we will end up with a customized design for each individual application that will be not very efficient. So uh, that's about better we summarize all the common service and the transport layer and provide such a unified design that can be shared by different uh, applications. So that might be, will be ideal. Next. Uh, I already, um, uh, in the draft, uh, uh, do a survey on the, all, all the different, uh, uh, different kind of uh, transport layer protocols. And none of them actually meets the requirement uh, in this scenario. So we uh, do need to consider having a new design. Next. So they share the, the new design should meet the common requirement like simplicity, uh, generality, and uh, openness and compatibility. Um, next. So the purpose of draft is just uh, simply raise the community awareness of the problem and uh, help uh, uh, us to understand the problem uh, space and try to explore the opportunities and uh, any uh, collaboration uh, will come. Uh, let's um, start to think about the possibility. Thank you. Yeah, Stirk, please. Yeah, thanks, good call. Mm -hmm. um, the question is of course, um, how to do it, right? And um, so just a question to you. Um, in some of the discussions we had, so for example, on collective communications, mm -hmm. One concern that people had is that, um, well, this idea of having the network so helping you with, say, aggregation or something, um, it does not really work in the presence of connection-oriented communication. Mm -hmm. So um, that seems to suggest that a more data-oriented approach yeah. could be useful. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. So as, as I said, so the, even for this uh, kind of a collab, uh, collective communication, it's also for the it's a RPC lags. It's like you know, servers, uh, the workers just send a single uh, packet of message and then get a single packet back. So, so that's a that's a not a streaming service. If it's a streaming service, the, the problem is much more complex. But we do have sessions, right? You have a job and involve a lot of workers, but they all send individual packets. But the difference is some of them need uh, some uh, synchronized uh, work, but some, some just for the individual request. But still, they share the common RPC-like communication pattern. So I think uh, in this sense, we might have a, a single um, transport layer uh, protocol can actually satisfy all the requirements. Right. Yeah, just I'm afraid we have to keep the discussion short. Just quick and quickly. Uh, so you, yeah. you keep mentioning the word packet. Do you think that's the good abstraction for, for these protocols? Um, because typically um, we are talking about application data units. Uh, that could be several packets and so on. So what is the level um, or the layer at which this transfer protocol should operate in your opinion? Sure. Um, I, I don't quite uh, transport layer is a, a, 
apparently it's above the network layer and below the application layer. It's a, uh, some common service like guarantee the uh, congestion control, uh, packet loss uh, recovery, and uh, uh, also maintain the fairness between the different sessions. So I think those are common services should be done at this layer. Okay, then let's talk offline. Oh, yeah, we talk offline. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, Colin Perkins. Um, I think that your last comment there gets to, to the heart of my concern here. You're approaching the transport layer in the way it is designed for the internet. Um, within network computation, I don't think we have the same model anymore. And I don't think the, the model of a connection-oriented transport between two endpoints um, which provides a bunch of you know, reliability and rate adaptation and that sort of thing is necessarily the right model for thinking about systems within network computation. So I would urge you to think more broadly about the possibilities. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, in, in my uh, thinking, that um, might not be a, a connection-oriented uh, protocol that, that will be very hard to achieve. But uh, fortunately, for this uh, kind of uh, this this set of uh, applications, uh, maybe the connection yeah. list. Uh, uh, maybe uh, sorry. Uh, let's keep the discussion very short. Uh, let and move further discussion in the list. All right. Uh, Ike, please. Yeah, hi, hi, um, Just a few pointers. So we had a draft in this group a few years back um, on transport issues. So, and I guess a few of your issues were already discussed. In that yeah, draft. yes, I'm I'm aware of those drafts. Uh, it's a uh, yeah, we're talking about uh, similar issues, and uh, yeah, I uh, yeah, maybe we have have more discussion on that. Yeah, yeah and the second pointer, I think there are already also some concrete proposals regarding transport or transport-like protocols for in network computing. Uh, so I can remember a paper last year at the, um, I can't remember the conference right now, but I will get uh, to you after afterwards. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Howie. Let's move on. Carlos. Okay, thanks. I'm Carlos Bernalos. I'm presenting this on behalf of my co-authors. I'll try to be very, very brief. So next slide, please. So this is an evolution of a document that uh, is already published as an RFC. It was the, the result of uh, another IR, uh, IRTF working group, which is completing layer architecture for software defined networking class, where we propose a layer uh, control architecture where we have different strata. And on each of these strata, we have different, uh, different planes. Originally in class, we have a, what we call transport. Now we, we are renaming that to connectivity uh, uh, strata and another one for service strata. So we separate basically the concerns and the responsibility of these two different things, the services and the connectivity. And then on each of them, we have the different planes. So in the current document, what we proposed that was already presented in ITF 116 and 17 is to augment this class architecture with uh, different strata. So we added a new stratum for computing or for compute, basically considering the distributed resources that we may have for computing attached to different points in the network. And we also propose to add new plane, a new plane on all the different strata, which uh, we have been changing the name, but basically has to deal with the data related for each of the strata. Uh, next slide, please. So here you have a picture uh, that tried to represent this. The terminology actually is not the last one. So you can see the service stratum, connectivity stratum, and computer stratum, and then different planes, uh, resource management, control, and telemetry, which is this one that uh, I mentioned before related to the data of each of the stratum. Uh, next slide, please. So changes from the previous version presented in the last ATF, we have changed, and this what I mentioned that is not updated in the figure, the telemetry plane to learning plane. Uh, so sorry, to the telemetry plane to data analysis plane, originally was called learning plane. So we have kind of updated the name to something that we feel reflects better what it's, it is about. We added in the draft the figure that you saw before, trying to uh, avoid the 
the potential interpretation that the, there is some kind of a hierarchy between the different stratum, which is not the case. And uh, the main change in this version uh, has been the adding some pointers to some possible means of communication between strata and planes, although we, we have been only considering strata for the time being. Next slide. This is basically the different examples that we have considered so far in the draft. So we have communication between application service and we listed there different options that can be used. The same for service and connectivity, service and compute and compute and connectivity. And there are some things that are already existing documents and existing work and some even discussions on uh, ongoing discussions on different working groups at the ATF. Next slide, which is the one the last one, sorry. Uh, the next steps that we identify as authors of this contribution is to add more deployment use cases aligned with the discussion of the research group and potentially in the future, depending on the feedback that you guys uh, may provide, to consider asking for uh, RG adoption at uh, point in the near future. Any feedback, comments? That will be. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, actually, I uh, cut the queue, I locked the queue. Okay. Uh, and thank you. Keep it short. Let's move on to next the last present presenter. And I'd say um, if there were some comments or questions uh, for the um, for Carlos's talk, please take them to the mailing list. Hi. Good morning. Uh, my name is Daniel King from Lancaster Union. University. I think on the agenda, uh, Rajiv from the BBC was due to present, uh, so thank you. This is uh, essentially just a short uh, introduction for a project that we're working on in the UK with uh, the BBC. So essentially, the BBC is a, a, a very large organization that is uh, developing content for not just the UK market, but actually internationally. We have around uh, 25 million uh, uh, license fee payers uh, 2022 and approximately 400 million uh, uh, consumers of BBC content uh, worldwide. And the BBC has a uh, quite a, a pedigree of technology innovation, especially obviously for media, but not only li limited to media, uh, as you can see here. And what we wanted to do was just kind of signpost uh, the project to some discussion that we're going to be having uh, in CATS tomorrow. And essentially, AI for me is I'm trying to forward to the next slide. To that. <laughs> so AI for me is taking uh, uh, the next step of uh, media distribution, uh, moving away from linear content. So essentially streaming uh, over the internet uh, a particular program or object and moving to personalized media, so interactive. Mm -hmm. And this poses you know, several significant uh, computational challenges for the way that uh, media networks are built and content is distributed. But, you know, the point I want to make here is just to underline the scale that essentially we're talking about. And, and this is applied research. So what's being developed in AI for me will have commercial applicability in the very near future. So compared to linear media, object media is essentially taking uh, a variety of uh, media objects and then augmenting them with uh, virtual reality backgrounds, uh, transcribed content, uh, binary sounds, uh, overlays. And there are examples of personalized media that are very short. Uh, in, next slide. Thanks. Uh, and you can actually go on to the next slide here. Uh, there is uh, per personalized media for very short content, maybe a weather broadcast, but also personalized media for a concert or a music event, as well as sports. And what AI for me is doing is essentially distributing several resources in the network. So these are computational storage, CMS, uh, and then delivering to different users that are attached to the network. So there will be a variety of handsets, smart TVs, uh, consoles. So from a, a coin perspective, you know, what are the research ch challenges? Well, really they're legion. And although we requested a bit more time uh, for this session, clearly it was a packed agenda. So we only really had a few minutes to introduce um, uh, the project. What we'll do moving forward is uh, either submit uh, an internet draft, if that's the preferred model, uh, or come back with a very sort of narrow but 
deep discussion on one area of compute in the network. As I mentioned, tomorrow, we're really talking about traffic steering and the uh, need to set up a service instance that interconnects several of these sort of uh, functional components that are listed here. Next slide, please. Uh, and as you can see, we've got sort of two control elements. We've got our uh, cloud orchestrator. So essentially we've got compute, which are a combination of CPU and GPU, where we have to offload computational capabilities uh, from the user's device, maybe onto a local node. And actually how that's uh, uh, evaluated is actually part of the AI for me uh, application prep process. Uh, and there are uh, requests for types of services that are pre-computed near real time, so relative to when uh, the user wants them. And those will be sort of pushed to uh, CDN nodes and then stored and then consumed uh, when the user actually needs it. Uh, and there are, of course, several challenges between the AI for me cloud orchestrator and the network controller. Next slide, please. So we, we have uh, some interesting use cases that, that maybe we can uh, drill into much more detail uh, at a, a future event and also link to some specific papers. Uh, but AI, uh, machine learning specifically, you know, has uh, a significant uh, role, I think, to play here. Uh, this is uh, sort of just in the second year of, of our five-year project. And as I mentioned, you know, some of this applied research will be used uh, for the commercial network. Final slide, please. So please, if this looks like an interesting project and uh, you'd like to get some more information about it, then check out the website uh, and also uh, contact me or Rajiv directly. Tomorrow, we actually have a 30-minute pre presentation in the CATS working group where we'll be sort of diving into uh, much more technical information uh, about sort of the compute optimization placement management uh, and network uh, optimization as well. Thanks. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, so that's all for the presentation today. I wonder if uh, Eve or Marie say you have something to say before we finish? I simply wanted to thank everybody for staying with us um, and for listening in despite whatever time zone you might be in that is absurdly different than Prague. <laughs> Marisha Zay, any last words? Okay. Okay. We'll call thanks. it a wrap. Yeah. And uh, yeah, particularly thanks to uh, Ike for your help here today. And thank the presenters and I'll see you next meeting.